Okay, so here's the deal. We are going to talk about breathing today. We're going to talk about the five things that happen when you don't breathe right. And guess what? You don't breathe right. I already know this because a huge, huge percentage of the population do not breathe right. So unless you're the 0.09%, then you're not breathing correctly. And let me tell you what it's doing to your body. First of all, I will have a question for you. Are you sure that you are getting enough oxygen? And I'm not talking about your weekend hikes or when you're puffing at the gym, when you're working out. I mean in every moment with every breath. Are you really, really filling your lungs all the way with the good stuff? Oxygen is the life force that allows our bodies to do what they do. It's what powers our bodies. And without enough of that, things get pretty messy on the inside. So today we're going to unpack what can go wrong when you are running low on O2. The first thing that happens is fatigue. You are going to feel more tired than normal. A key, key sign that you are not getting enough oxygen is chronic fatigue. Oxygen is essential for your cells to metabolize and for energy production. So if you do not have very much energy, a lack of that can be caused by lack of oxygen. Now, you might feel tired, you might feel sluggish, it can be that you're unable to concentrate. There was a 2017 study in the Journal of Applied Physiology and it showed that low oxygen levels in the body can lead to fatigue. So it is proven by science. I'm just giving you one example. There are actually a lot of them over the years. There's a YouTuber, her name is Elle Mills. She shared her experience with about chronic fatigue and she kept having this problem. And after she saw, sought medical help, then she was you know, going through all this process. She finally figured out with her doctors that her oxygen levels were low. And by taking care of this problem, by addressing it, she managed to get back her energy and she was able to continue doing the creative work that she does. The second one is poor cognitive function. In other words, I can't think straight. Have you ever said that? Have you ever thought that? We all have. Did you know that your brain uses 20% of all the oxygen in your whole body? And when it doesn't get enough, your cognitive performance will dip down. You won't be able to think, your brain, you have a hard time remembering. We're talking memory issues. We're talking trouble focusing. We're talking even slow reaction times. This can be huge. If you're driving a car, depending on what you're doing, this can be actually very dangerous. There was a 2018 study in Nature and they found a clear, direct correlation between low oxygen levels and reduced cognitive function. And in some cases they saw that it was as bad as if you had been drinking and you were above the alcoholic limit. Scary if you're driving, if you are taking care of um, a young child, if you are doing something that your response matters. If you're gonna cross the street, it can make a difference. I wanna give you an example of someone, his name is Rich Bull. He's an athlete influencer. And what I wanna show you is, I wanna show you what his journey looked like. So he's 50 years old. He's now become an, a full-time vegan wellness and plant-based nutrition advocate. This is what he does. He, he's a popular public speaker. He is a dad, he has four kids. And he, he is, right now, he inspires people worldwide as a transformative example of somebody who has changed their life because of his courageous choices and his healthy living. I'll just give you one example of what Rich has done. He has been a top finisher at the 2008, not just 2008, also 2009 Ultraman World Championships in Hawaii. Let me tell you what that is. This is considered by many to be one of the world's most daunting and grueling endurance races on the planet on the planet. That's, that's saying a lot. So this is what the Ultraman is. It's a three-day marathon. You, the first day you do 320 mile double Ironman distance triathlon. Oh wait, sorry, that's not day one. That's the whole thing. 320 miles. It's a double Ironman distance triathlon that goes around the entire big island of Hawaii. And so, and the race is limited to only a select few. You have to be hand-picked. There are only 35 people. They are carefully selected and they are invitation-only participants from all over the world. So day one, now we're just on day one. Day one involves a 6.2 mile ocean swim. And immediately after that is a 90 mile cross-country cycling race. That's just day one. Day two is a 170 mile cycling race. Now, keep in mind, I've done a half triathlon. It's, it's a lot of work 
and it was so fun, but it's one half of one <laughs> triathlon. And I am telling you this, just to read this is crazy to me. So day two is the 175 mile cycling race and the event ends on day three with a 52 mile double marathon run. And it's not just anywhere. This is in the most searing hot location where all of the black volcanic rock is. Have you ever been to that side of the island? So there's on the, it's on the Kona coast and there are, the volcanoes have erupted and so they just have black, it looks like crystal only, it's black rock, it's volcanic rock all over. It's just hard. There's nothing, there's no place for grass to grow. It's just all lava that has hardened. It is crazy. So this is where you're running through. You're running through this part, double marathon. Crazy. So Rich, he noticed that, wait. So Rich is an athlete and he's in good shape. And he started noticing a decline in his mental sharpness. He just noticed that he wasn't being able to focus the same. And he noticed a difference. And he eventually, as he worked with his doctors, he eventually traced it back to shallow breathing, shallow breathing and poor oxygen. By changing his breathing habits, he dramatically improved his cognitive function. You think cognitive function is important? When you're trying to do a double triathlon, it's kind of a big deal. The third thing that happens is a weakened immune system. You have to have oxygen to help your immune system to stay healthy. When your body's oxygen levels drop low, what happens is your immune system can take a hit and it leaves you more susceptible to infections. When I, um, when I got really sick, I had the dreaded C word and it was really scary. I did so much research. And one of the things I learned about the immune system is that the immune system can handle a certain number of attacks at a time. And um, might be seven, might be eight, depending on how strong it is at the moment. And what happens is it can handle it. If your body has a mutated cell, there are several mechanisms that are several steps that happen. First, your body will, if it doesn't um, create apoptosis or kill itself, the cell doesn't die like it's supposed to, then your body will send messenger cells to help um, to tell it to kill itself. And if that doesn't work, then the body will send um, little soldier messengers who are there to escort that cell out of the body. And it, it has step after step after step. I'm not gonna go into the de details because this is not an immune video, immune system video, but your body can handle it. But when it's overloaded and it has too many things going on all at the same time, that's when it doesn't take care of it. So this is a really big deal. What you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you keep your immune system strong. And in order to do that, one of the powerful things you can do is make sure that you're breathing correctly. There was a study published in the Journal of Immunology Research in 2015, and this is what it showed. It indicated that oxygen definitely plays a critical role in helping manage a healthy immune response. Now think about the word manage. It's not just makes it happen. Managing, your body has so many systems that need to um, that inter, intertwine and intersect with each other and they need to work together. And so this helps manage that when your oxygen is running freely. There's an Instagrammer and her name is Shona Vertu. She does fitness with a focus on yoga. She, was, she kept getting really sick and she didn't know why. She started checking into it and guess what she found? She found that her oxygen levels were lower than normal and by focusing on better breathing and healthy breathing, she not only felt healthier, but she noticed fewer bouts of illness. Now, it might sound a little bit daunting because you think, oh my goodness, I can't even just relax and breathe, but realize it's just like anything. When you start to learn to read, when you, a child starts to learn to walk, at first it's a little uncomfortable. You have to think about it. You have to like, Think through the steps in your mind as you're trying to do it, but then little by little, it turns into a habit and it becomes not a big deal. Okay, the fourth thing is impaired digestion. This is huge because we have our brain and we know how much our brain affects us, but they're starting, they've been calling the gut the second brain because they are starting to realize that problems that they thought were associated with the brain are actually associated with the gut because the messages either aren't getting to the brain properly or the wrong messages are getting to the brain because of the problems in our gut. So oxygen is necessary for the digestion and the metabolism of food. And if your body is not getting enough oxygen, your digestive system can be struggling. And according to a, th a 2016 study in the American Journal of Physiology, low oxygen levels can disrupt gut function and potentially lead to gut issues. 
So this is, you know, I'm telling you one item of research on some of these when there are hundreds showing that this is actual reality. Number five is shortness of breath. Low oxygen levels make you feel short of breath, like, like you can't catch your breath. Have you ever, if you run or if you exercise uh, very, very avidly, if you go to a place that is high elevation and you're not used to it, you know what it feels like. All of a sudden, you feel like you can't get enough air. You're breathing really hard and you can't get it in. So a lot of times what, what athletes and, and teams, football teams, basketball teams, when they're going, to, if they are used to sea level and they're going to compete against a team that's in the mountains, like in Utah or Colorado, they will go days early so that their bodies can acclimate to this level of oxygen because they need the oxygen to perform at peak performance. So pay attention to this. Notice if you feel like I can, you can't get enough breath in, if you're out exercising, or even if you're just relaxing and you you notice I can't seem to get enough breath in, then all of, and or you have shortness of breath in your workouts. According to the American Lung Association, shortness of breath is a common sign of low oxygen levels. So just be aware. Health and there's a health and fitness influencer. Her name is Lucy Mountain. She shared her story about experiencing a really unusual shortness of breath as she tried to work out. And it, I mean, it was frustrating. So she started getting some medical advice and she found she wasn't breathing effectively. Can you imagine? You, you, your mind goes crazy places and you can think it's something even bigger. Always work with your doctor, of course, because there could be something bigger. But if you're noticing this, start paying attention to your breathing. So um, she noticed that she was getting a limited amount of oxygen intake and she started improving her breathing techniques and then her workouts improved significantly. Now, I said I was gonna give you five things, I lied. I actually have two bonus items for you because these are really important. So number six is mood swings. And some of you already are going, oh, that's me. <laughs> so if you know what this is like, you understand. And we've all had mood swings. I don't care if you're a guy, girl. Guys, have you ever gotten so mad you want to punch somebody? Okay, that's a mood swing. If you get really anxious, if you get really worried, if you get mad, if you get um, just mood swings up and down, they can be more mild, they can be more wild. But low oxygen levels can impact your mental health and it can potentially lead to mood swings. It can lead to anxiety, it can lead to depression, in 2017, in the Journal of Psychiatry, they reported a definite correlation between low oxygen levels in the body and increased symptoms of anxiety and depression. Now, think about our world today and how much of that we have going on. Maybe we could use a little bit of learning breathing techniques because we, we, used, to be, we used to live in a world and be in a society where we had to go out and hunt for our food. So we're running and chasing and doing all these things all day long. That's how we lived. Carrying heavy things because they didn't even have wheelbarrows. Even when they invented the wheel, now we, they're carrying heavy coats of skins. All of these things kind of force the whole intake of oxygen. And so as our society has changed, it, it became the agricultural age. We started having animals help us do our work, which is a wonderful thing. But guess what? Our breathing techniques changed. And then it became the industrial age. And the people with the wealth were the ones who were, who had the machines. And so we had manufacturing. Little by little, we've changed. Now we're technology age, which is even more sedentary. We have to care about how we're breathing. I wanna tell you about an Instagrammer, um, Danny Dyer. Let me tell you what happened. Um, she spoke about her struggles with sudden mood swings. Can you imagine, you know, you're trying to do your work and all of a sudden all these things are happening and it's, it's hard, it's frustrating and you, you don't know what's wrong. You're, you're trying to control it. She's consulted with her healthcare professionals and guess what she discovered? Her oxygen levels were below optimal and she changed her breathing habits. It helped manage her mood swings. And yes, this really is the last one. Number seven is decreased stamina and physical performance. This can be with your sports. This can be with you're walking, you're exercising, this can be with intimacy, it can be with whatever. But if your stamina is decreased and your physical performance is decreasing, think about this. Your muscles need oxygen for endurance and for performance. And if they don't get enough, your strength, your stamina, your overall physical performance is going to suffer and you'll see a drop. There was a study in the journal Sports Sciences in 2016 and they demonstrated a direct 
correlation, as you know what it's gonna say, correlation between oxygen supply and physical performance. This is huge. There's a bodybuilder on Instagram. His name is Callum Von Moger, and he noticed a dip in his workout performance. And when he started investigating what was going on, he discovered that he had been holding his breath during heavy lifting. So it was limiting his oxygen intake. Because when you are gonna lift, you need to, as you're using your muscle, you need to be breathing in, you need to breathe in. And as you do the hardest part of the workout, the part where it strains your muscle the most, you need to be breathing out of your mouth. And if he was holding his breath, he's stopping his muscles from getting all of that oxygen and the circulation. So by consciously focusing on his breathing, his performance dramatically improved. So let's be clear that oxygen is crucial for our health. You already know that. Hopefully you understand a little bit better what to watch for. From our brain, to our gut, to our muscles, to our mood, every part of our body needs this vital, vital force. And the best way that you can increase your performance in all of these areas is by focusing on breathing techniques, by honing them, by learning them, practicing them. So pay attention to how you are breathing. And remember, your body, your body loves a good, deep, diaphragmatic breath. I, I sing and I love doing musical theater. And so my voice teacher, oh, I have the hardest time breathing all the way down into my diaphragm. I always wanna breathe up here. Cause you know, if you, see, if you see this expand, you're breathing wrong. When you breathe correctly, this would stay here and it's relaxed and you would breathe in and you're, you would feel your diaphragm expand. I'll do another video where I show you some different techniques so that you can learn that because that's beyond the scope of this. But I want you to really be thinking, I want you to understand it deeper and better because it's not just about taking in fresh air when you're out and about. It's about optimizing every breath that you take and you'll get in the habit if you just start to practice. Doesn't have to be complicated. By focusing on deeper, slower breathing, not only can you boost your oxygen levels, but you can also kick a lot of health issues that you didn't realize were even connected. Oh, I can't wait for the video on techniques because there are some fun tricks that I have learned from like breathing coaches and really, really amazing teachers. So remember, this, all the stories I shared with you today, these are real live people. People who have challenges just like we do, people who have something that comes up with their health that makes them nervous or scares them and they're wondering what's going on and don't think, well, I'm just getting older, that's why. No, that is never a good answer. We are not gonna do that here because we are not gonna give in to that. So let's take a leaf out of their books and give our bodies the oxygen it needs. Take the time to figure it out. So this is gonna sound really dumb. Keep breathing. <laughs> Keep breathing. Make sure you're doing it right. So stay tuned for more health hacks, lifestyle tips, and I'm actually gonna be doing a series on breathing. So keep watching for the next videos to come out because I'm gonna show you some techniques. I'm gonna show you some do's and don'ts. I'm gonna show you a lot of things. So stay with me because remember, I don't want us to just be healthy. I want us to be better than healthy. Okay, I'll see you in the next video.